in the afternoon. Top first, Greg Brummett on the hill. Hal Morris doesn't hit it into the gap. He hits it over the gap. That's right, his second home run, and Brummett, well, he's bumming. Reds lead 2-0, but the Giants come back. Kurt Manwaring takes the hanging John Roper curveball deep to left center for his fourth home run. Plenty of gaps in that San Francisco outfield. Reds still led 7-6. Later in the inning, Johnny Ruffin in relief of Roper, Will Clark. A rare three-bagger, the triple off the right center field wall. That would score Dave Martinez and Robbie Thompson. So the Giants win 10-7 for San Francisco. Their 29th come-from-behind win of the season. They lead the Braves by nine. Hal Morris, a pair of blasts in the loss. He will miss Tuesday's action because of a one-game suspension for his spring training altercation with Jose Mesa of Cleveland. The Cardinals in Pittsburgh looking to gain some ground on the idle Phillies. Jim Leland, remember? He remembers pennant races. Some good defense in this game. Mark Witten at the plate. Bob Walk, little self-defense. Alan Watson pitching and winning. Check out the great turn all around on this double play. One, six, three. Ozzie can still do it in the middle. The play of the night, Watson still pitching. Al Martin, it's a shot to deep center. Ray Langford, can he cover ground or what? Makes the grab. Top of the eighth, Bob Walk still pitching. Luis Alisea breaks the game open. A two-run double. That would score Todd Zeal and Langford. So the Cards win at seven to three. And Mr. and Mrs. Watson, add them to the list of the superstitious. Alan Sr. constantly eats sunflower seeds while his son pitches, while his mom, Dorothy, she's so excited she can't even watch. So she goes from concession stand to concession stand. I mean, someone has to buy the sunflower seeds. Cards. He does against David Cohn. The early walk, then he's going, and he's stealing second, and the throw gets away. And Mike McFarland's wild throw gets Junior to third. Three hitters later, a wild pitch uncorked. And Junior beats the throw home, and the Mariners cut the lead to 3-2. Couple more hitters later, Dan Howitt. Who? Dan Howitt. Called up from AAA on Wednesday. First homer of the year, and the Mariners take a 4-3 lead. But more bad news for the M's. Third injury in his main days. Tino Martinez injured his knee. More on that later. Bottom eight, down one. Chico lean pinch hits for the Royals. The base hit. Wrist throw. Not in time to get Gary Gaetti with the game-winning run. Why? Because Jeff Montgomery comes on, and with two on, that was a low pitch. But call the strike to Dave Magadan, and the game ends. It ends a 7-6 Kansas City win. Mike McFarland, 3-of-3 three three in this game, including his 15th homer. Excellent middle relief. John Havey and Billy Brewer, Stan Belinda. This gave him 10 hits, and he was in trouble in the third. Runners on the corners, Mike Aldretti at the plate. And he takes one to right center field. Ellis Birch playing right, gets there, but can't keep the glove on it. Ruben Sierra waving him home. Ruben scores the relay from Ozzie Guillen to the plate. Troy Neal is out as Karkovice hangs on. Oakland leads 2-1 to the fifth. Three straight run scoring singles, including the bloop by Joey Cora. Dave Henderson couldn't get there. Ozzie scores, and the White Sox lead 4-3. Later on, Sam inning, two on, and Bo Jackson strike out, strikes out, but he can't break out of a four for 25 slump. But speaking of breaking out, game tied at four in the seventh. Frank Thomas, the big hurt. 29th homer, RBI 93, a game winner. He hit it on the first pitch, too, something he usually doesn't do, but this season he's done a couple of times. Thomas also had two singles and a walk in the White Sox win. Robin Mike Moore facing Mark Parrott. It's a two-run homer off the facing for Parrott, his second home run of the season. With a 3-0 lead, Arthur Rhodes would get some defensive help in this one. Tim Hewlett coming up at third base, makes the backhand gem, and then shows the arm as he guns down Chad Kruder. Rhodes was masterful through eight innings. He allowed three hits, struck out eight, and one of those eight would be Skeeter Barnes. Tough night for Barnes in the field as well. Parrot up again in the ninth. Barnes plenty of time on the grounder, and yet throws it away. That would allow David Segui to score. Barnes and the Tigers fall 4-1. Rhodes tying his career high with eight strikeouts. He's been a shot in the arm for the Red Hot O's since coming off the DL. He's 2-0 with an ERA of 1.29. Back wins for the first time in a month. Tom Candiotti seeking his fifth consecutive win. Top of the fourth, two outs, 1-0 L.A. Pedro Castellano tags the high knuckler for his third of the year. That would tie it at one. Check out the L.A. defense. Brett Butler, the diving grab in center. 
Bottom of the 10th, one out, the base is loaded, tied at two. Steve Reed gets Eric Karros into the conventional one, two, three double play. Easy as one, two, three. Don Zimmer likes what he sees. Top of the 11th, nobody out, men on the corners tied at two. Vinny Castilla, the sack fly to right field. That would score Gerald Clark. So Colorado wins at three, two, and 11. For the Rockies, their second consecutive win. Now ask any pitcher which individual stat is most important. Chances are they'll say ERA, in which Tom Candiotti is tops in the league, doing just fine both overall and at Chavez Ravine. But right up there, they'd never admit it, but it's run support, of which Tom gets very little, in fact, the least in the league. What about the Cubs and Marlins? Yes, yeah, good question. Glad you asked. Sammy Sosa says, hi, Mom. Don't send money. I've got plenty. Bottom of the seventh, tied at two. Walt Weiss, the single to right field. Off Frank Castillo, that would score Benito Santiago. The Marlins lead it 3-2. Bottom of the eighth, Jeff Conine hits a shot off of Castillo. Derek May apparently comes up with a great catch. But wait, between innings, Renee Latchman tells Bob Davidson, hey, my park, my rules, what's going on? Well, take another look. The ground rule says if a ball hits the scoreboard, it's a fair ball and it's in play. Conine should have had a hit. Top of the ninth, Brian Harvey comes in to finish it off. He does just that. Strikes out Kevin Roberson to end the game. So the Marlins win it 3-2. Harvey has 35 saves for a Marlins club that has won just 48 ball games. So he's closed down 73% of the Florida wins, putting an end to the myth that expansion teams don't need stoppers. Well, the Padres' 10-game homestand continuing on against the Astros. Another big game of Jack Murphy. You can feel the excitement. Top of the fifth, Jeff Bagwell grounds a short. Ricky Gutierrez to throw home. Pete Harnish playing the physical game. He runs over Brad Ausmus, the catcher. Astros led it 3-0. Bottom of the fifth, Tony Gwynn. Hot shot, not that hot. Andrew Arce Daniel bare hands it, no problem. Gets Jeff Gardner at second. Top of the tenth now. 4-4 tie, Eric Anthony on third, Luis Gonzalez, the suicide squeeze, Eric Anthony, he is safe, and that wins the game. Astros win it by a score of 5-4, 8,237 in attendance, that's a season low crowd in San Diego.